the legendary Boston Marathon is approaching once again. However, for some Needham residents, the preparations began months ago. Kristen Connors and Cameron Morsberger chatted with some residents who decided to run this year to find out what cause they chose to support and what it takes to prepare mentally and physically for a marathon. Take a look. If you could tell us a little bit about why you got involved with the Boston Marathon this year and a little bit about your, your story and your team that you're running with. I am running for the Brigham Stepping Strong team, um, <clears throat> which is a wonderful organization, which the Stepping Strong Center for Trauma was founded after the marathon bombings um, 10 or 11 years ago, I guess, this year. And um, uh, one, she was a girl at the time. She's a woman now. Her name was Jillian Rennie. She was severely injured and the Brigham doctors, trauma surgeons were able to save her life, save her legs. Um, and so the um, her family, the Rennie family, founded the Jillian Rennie Stepping Strong Center for Trauma Innovation. I am running for the same one as Caitlin, the Brigham Stepping Strong. Um, it turns out a former neighbor of mine is one of the head doctors um, running their trauma innovation center so once i had that connection i was like oh this is the one this is definitely the one that i feel the closest to uh claire and i are both running for the home for little wanderers um which is uh, a great nonprofit organization based in boston i think it's one of the oldest in the country it has ties that go back to uh post-revolutionary war um helping kids of all ages uh, with foster care, adoption, and now um, residential services, education, counseling. When my dad asked me to run, I was like, you know what, this is such a cool opportunity. The Boston Marathon is so hard, um, so hard to run, even not just qualified, but get like the bibs for. Um, so yeah, we thought it would be something cool and really hard though to do together. You know, there's pros and cons to both. Obviously, as a qualified runner, you don't have to raise the money, but you're kind of on your own. So as a charity runner, you're really part of a team and a family and a community. And there's so many charity runners. Like this weekend, you know, two, 300 of us went to the starting line in the pouring rain and ran from the starting line all the way to Brookline. So you have like a built-in community, built-in structure. MGH is an amazing team. Um, and it just puts meaning behind the miles, like those tough days when you know, it's freezing out or Saturday when it was pouring rain, like I was like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this for the pediatric cancer patients at MGH and it gets you up. I'm running for Gronk, Rob Gronkowski and his family's foundation. It's the Gronk Nation Youth Foundation. And their main goal is to give back to youth in many different ways, but they're trying to build a, they're not trying to, they are building a playground in Boston. So the fundraising goes directly towards funding the playground build out, which is really, really cool. He's been incredible in this whole process too. I can't imagine how hard it is training um, for a marathon, and I'm sure it's been going on for a while for you. Can you speak a little bit about that? What's so awesome about living in Needham and living so close to the course and living so close to the, um, the route is, you know, you just get yourself into Newton and there's people everywhere running and training. And um, there's just really that sense of camaraderie, which makes it all fun and enjoyable and exciting. When I was like more of a teenager, early 20s in college, like I would push myself to the absolute brink where I was like getting sick or getting like the same na nagging injuries. And now that I think I've taken some time away from competitive sports, I've able to have the like, you know what, my body, checking in with my body, like I'm feeling absolutely exhausted today. I'm not gonna push it. I'm gonna get back tomorrow or the next day. Like, and I think having that grace with yourself during training is so, so important um, because it's better, you know, to, I think it's better at this point to go be going slower if it means like you're feeling healthy and your body isn't totally collapsing. Um, so that's like a delicate dance. I think with marathon training is like one to push and one to pull back. It's not just the training, but it's the amount of time they have to take to carve out to do it with all the other things going on in your life. So um, that's that was a big adjustment. And when I first started out running back in the you know late fall, um, uh, you know running out for three four miles was not a big deal. Um, but at the pace that I go now, 
like it's a it's it's kind of like an all it's almost like an all day thing. I got to <laughs> prep for it. I got to eat right. I got to drink right, and then I got to go, and I could be gone for three, four hours, and then I come <laughs> back, and I can't really, I don't really want to or can't do anything else. So um, there goes my Sunday uh, or Saturday. In the beginning, it was maybe a couple shorter, smaller runs during the week. And then, so because I teach fitness, another part of my training is that my schedule is potentially fairly different than other people who have their weekends wide open to do their long runs on Saturday mornings. I would wake up between three and 5 a.m. every Saturday to get my long run in. It started at six, I believe six miles was the first long run and then i just did 20 miles last weekend so every week the mileage has increased while also just staying consistent during the week with the weight training the cross training the shorter distance of miles and then obviously all of the spin that i've been doing on top of that too so i started ramping up my training in september um september october november I started running five days a week and getting up to like 30 miles a week. And then um, the formal 20 week training plan that I took from the BAA's website started in late November. So before I even started the training plan, I already had this great base of 30 miles a week. The thing that's gonna be the hardest to figure out is like the energy and the noise and the crowds, cause I've never seen anything like that. Um, so that's gonna be kind of crazy. So how does training for a marathon differ from the casual running or like the competitive running that you did in high school? Yeah, I mean, we had the most I ran in high school was 13 and that was a complete accident. We got lost. So we were only supposed to run 10, <laughs> um, 10 that day. I mean, yeah, I ran in the three and that is like 12 now. It's I was talking to someone at work. They're like, how much you got this week? And I'm like, I only have, I only have 12, which never would have said that in high school. So that's kind of a big difference. Um, a lot less speed stuff and the uh, competition. I mean, we had races every single week in high school. So that's something you can kind of get used to. And you don't really, you don't have that opportunity here. So kind of does create the last next two weeks a little bit more nervous because you have nothing to compare it to. We talked earlier to a lot of people who are first time marathon runners. Obviously, if you're not one, we talked to them about, you know, what it's like mentally and physically uh, preparing for your first marathon. I was just wondering in your case, does the preparation change or is it just something that you're used to now? The training's different for me because I'm going for a time, like I'm racing Boston. Um, so I think for first timers, the goal is just to finish and feel good and make it through. I want to get a qualifying time. So I do train, you know, once or twice a week, I have what you call a workout where I go to the track or I have a tempo run or um, like a midweek long run. Like last Wednesday I had a 10 mile run in the middle of the week. Last week I ran 53 miles. So I feel like, um, you know, as an avid runner, my goals are a little bit different. You guys are father-daughter duo running this, which is really cool. Is the plan to try and stick together as much as possible? I think so, although I've given Clara permission to to, to run ahead if she wants. I think um, we'll see. Um, our pacing is very different. I don't want to I don't want to drag her down too much. I want to do it with my dad and be there the whole time. And I think we'll need each other the most towards those last six miles, like everyone says are awful. Again, it's just a reminder of like, not everything needs to be this insane competition. And it's so cool to just have the experience and, and do it together. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, my focus.